Welcome dear students to lecture 6 of module 3 time response of feedback control system. In this lecture we will work out some more numericals to find out the steady state error constants, finding the time response specifications and the uh, steady state error. So let us see what is given in the question over here. So an open loop transfer function of a unity feedback system is given by g of s equal to k by s into s t plus 1 where k and t are positive constant. By what factor should the amplifier gain k be reduced so that the peak overshoot of unit step response of the system is reduced from 75% to 25%. Okay, so let us uh, calculate this now. So first thing is as usual now uh, by now you know what you are supposed to do you have to write the closed loop transfer function so c of s by r of s equal to so it is g of s by 1 plus g of s into h of s okay so what do we get here g of s k by s into s t plus 1 divided by 1 plus k by s into s t plus 1 h of s is 1 unity feedback so after simplification what we get over here is k divided by s square t plus s plus k but again we don't want uh, any coefficients with a square take that t out so c of s by r of s equal to if i take that t out it will go to the numerator a square plus 1 by t into s plus k by t okay now what are we supposed to do next compare with the given standard second order transformation so i just write the denominator of that square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square so omega n square is equal to k by t omega n is equal to root k by t whole root it is okay whole root k by t and 2 zeta omega n is equal to 1 by t so what is zeta zeta is equal to 1 by t into 2 into omega n so i can add this 1 by 2t into omega n we got it as root k by root t so t i can write it as root t root t so one of the root t cancels therefore zeta will be 1 by 2 root k t so we got what is zeta and omega n in terms of k t now next what are we supposed to do see percentage overshoot is given percentage m b first it is 75 percent so what is the formula for percentage overshoot e to the power minus pi zeta 1 we will consider divided by root of 1 minus zeta 1 square into 100. So this will be 0.75 is equal to e to the power minus pi zeta 1 divided by root of 1 minus zeta 1 square. Okay. So here how to take exponential take natural log on both sides. So we get it as minus 0 0.288 equal to minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square. Now how will you find natural log? Use a calculator. ln of 0 0.75 you will get it as minus 0 0.288. So now squaring both the sides 0 0.0288 into 1 minus zeta square equal to pi square zeta square. So we get this 9.869 zeta square. 0 0.083 minus 0 
0.83 theta square equal to 9.869 theta square. So 9.953 theta square is equal to 0.083. Hence theta is, uh, we have taken it as 1, no? So I'll write it as zeta 1 everywhere. So, zeta 1 will be equal to 0 0.091. So, we got zeta 1 for overshoot of 75%. Next, uh, overshoot what they have given is 25%. So, we will consider this 25% and let us find the zeta. e power minus pi zeta 2 by root of 1 minus zeta to the whole zeta theta 2 square into 100. So, this is 0 0.25 is equal to e power minus pi theta 2 divided by root of 1 minus theta 2 square. So, taking natural log on both sides, get as minus 1.386 equal to minus pi theta 2 by root of 1 minus theta 2 square. Squaring both the sides, we get it as 1.922, 1 minus zeta 2 square equal to pi square, that is 9.869 zeta 2 square. So, here opening the brackets, 1.922 minus 1.922 zeta 2 square equal to 9.869 zeta 2 square. So, rearranging the and adding it up 11.791 zeta 2 square is equal to 1.922. So, zeta 2 is equal to 0 square 1.163 and zeta 2 is equal to 0 0.404. This is the answer for zeta 2. So, next we know the zeta value from the standard transform we have found. No, it is zeta 1 is 1 by 2 root k 1 t. Zeta 2, I write it as 1 by 2 root k 2 t. t is constant, k 1 they have asked it, it is varying. So, we will take k 1 and k 2. So, zeta 1 by zeta 2 is equal to 1 by 2 root k1 t by 1 by 2 root k2 t. So, this you get it as 2 root k2 t divided by 2 root k1 t. Hence, zeta 1 by zeta 2 is equal to 2 to cancel. Second cancel out t t, we get root k2 by root k1. So, what is zeta 1? Zeta 1 is 0 0.091 divided by 0 0.404 is equal to root k2 by root k1. What do we do next step? Next step, we have to square this, right? Squaring and dividing. So, square. So, root k2 by root k1 get it as 0 0.225. So, squaring k2 by k1, we get it as 0 0.05. So, k2 should be 0 0.05 times k1. This is the answer. For a control system shown in figure, find the value of k1 and k2 so that percentage overshoot is 25% and the peak time is 4 seconds. Assume unit step input. So, what's the first thing? A block diagram is given. So, first thing is finding the transfer function. So, here g of s is k1 by s square divided by negative feedback. So, 1 plus k1 by s square into 1 plus k2 s. Next, equal to simplifying this, what do we get? K1 divided by S square 
plus k1 k2 s plus k1 this is the transfer function c of s by r of s next comparing with the standard second order transfer function so what is omega n square we get it as k1 so omega n is equal to root k1 2 zeta omega n will be equal to k1 k2 okay so here uh, if you want we'll simplify later i'll, I'll keep as it is now because we are supposed to find k1 and k2 right okay so what is given percentage mp is given as 25 percent so what do we get from this one we'll get zeta so let us find zeta 25 is equal e power minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square into 100 this is 0 0.25 equal to e power minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square okay so here what do we do next next we have to take the natural log on both sides so this will be minus 1.386 equal to minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square squaring both the sides we get 1.922 into 1 minus zeta square equal to pi square zeta square that pi square zeta square will be 9.869 zeta square so here this will be 11.791 zeta square equal to 1.922 and zeta will be equal to 0 0.404 after simplification so we got zeta by next what is next the peak time so tp is given right what is tp pi by omega d which is equal to 4 seconds which is given so here so we get what do we get over here we get omega d is equal to pi by 4 so here but what is omega d it is omega n root of 1 minus zeta square equal to pi by 4 or omega n is equal to pi by 4 into root of 1 minus zeta square that is 0.404 square okay so what do we get omega n as omega n we get as 0.859 radians per second this we get over here so we know k1 is equal to omega n square so what is k1 0.859 square which is equal to 0.737 we got k1 value next k2 value we know that 2 zeta omega n is equal to k1 k2 so what will be k2 2 zeta omega n by k1 right so 2 into zeta is 0 0.404 into omega n what did we get omega n as we got it as 0 0.859 divided by what is k1 k1 we got it as 0 0.737 so k2 after simplification we get it as 0 0.941 this is the answer find the positional error kp velocity error kv and acceleration error ka coefficients for a unity feedback system with open loop transfer function g of s equal to k by s square into s plus 20 into s plus 30 also find k to limit the steady state error to 5 units due to r of t is equal to 1 plus 10 t plus 20 t square so here we are supposed to find the steady uh, st uh, steady state error constants and static error constants and the steady state error is given we have to find the k for that so how do we start let us first write what is given so g of s h of s is unity feedback so h of s g of s h of s will be equal to k divided by 
square into s plus 20 into s plus 30. This is given. Okay. Now, what is the next step? We have to find kp. What is kp equal to? Limit s tends to 0 g of s h of s. It's equal to limit s tends to 0 k divided by s square into s plus 20 into s plus 30. So, when I apply limit c by s square this is so, we will get this as infinity. So, k p is infinity. Next, what is next? We need to find k v. k v is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into g of s into h of s. Here this is limit s tends to 0. This will be s into k divided by s square s plus 20 into s plus 30. Okay. S and this cancels. We get limit s. So, if I apply limits to this, still see, still there is one more s in the denominator. So, this is also going to get infinity. Kv as infinity. Last, you have to find k is equal to limit s tends to 0 s square into g of s into h of s is equal to limit s tends to 0 s square into k divided by s square into s plus 20 into s plus 30 s square s square cancels when I apply limits what do we get I get k a as k divided by 20 into 30 which we will get as k by 600 so we got k a next so we got kp kv k a. they have mentioned the steady state error is 5 and the inputs are given as 1 plus 10 t plus 20 t square now if I compare with the standard second order in uh, the standard input, it is A1 plus A2t plus A3t square by 2 in this form. So we need to get it in this form. This as it is only changes over here. This should be 40t square by 2. So A1 will be 1, A2 will be 10 and A3 will be 40. Now, let us substitute. What is the formula? ESS is equal to A1 by 1 plus KP plus A2 by KV plus A3 by KA. This is the formula. Now, let us apply. Substitute. Okay, ESS is given. So, let me substitute for ESS. Right. So ESS is given as 5 is equal to a1 is 1 divided by 1 plus infinity plus. What is A2? A2 is 10 divided by infinity plus. What is A3? A3 is equal to 40 divided by K. That is K by 600. So, what we get? 5 is equal to 600 into 40 divided by K. Hence, K is equal to 4800. This is the answer. Next question over here is a unity feedback system has g of s equal to 40 into s plus 2 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 4. Find one type of the system, all error coefficients and error for ramp input with magnitude 4. So first let us write what is g of s into h of s. So, this is given as 40 into s plus 2 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 4. This is given. So, now here, see, they have asked the type of the system. What is the type of the system? Type is the number of poles at the origin. So, how many poles we have at the origin? See, this identifies the pole at the origin. So, how many poles? We have 1 pole right hence it is what type 1 system okay so one 
thing we have solved. Next, all error coefficients. So first one is kp is equal to limit s tends to 0 g of s into h of s. This is equal to limit s tends to 0 40 into s plus 2 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 4 is equal to when i apply the limits what happens it is divided by 0 hence we get it as infinity kp next we need to find k v is equal to limit s tends to 0 s into g of s into h of s so here limit s tends to 0 s into 40 into s plus 2 divided by we have s into s plus 1 into s plus 4 s and s will cancel now when we apply limits we get 40 into 2 divided by 4 so we get this as 20 so kv is 20 next ka limit s tends to 0 s square into g of s into h of s this is limit s tends to 0 we have s square into 40 into s plus 2 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 4 so 1 s will cancel but in the numerator we have a s hence k will be 0 Next, what is asked? Question is, you have to find the steady state error for a ramp input of magnitude 4. So, steady state error for ramp input ASS is given by A by KV. So, what is A? Magnitude is given as 4. So, here we have 4 divided by 20, which is 1 by 5. Since ASS is equal to 0 0.2. This is the answer. The step response of a second order system is shown in figure for an input of r of t equal to 2u of t. Determine the closed loop transfer function. Assume unity feedback system. So here uh, second order trans, uh, system is given. Okay. So from this response, what are the information you are going to get? See from this one information is the input is a step input with the magnitude of 2. Right. And peak time tp is equal to 2 and also the overshoot overshoot is given over here but one thing you have to remember is the derivation what we have done for the overshoot was for unit step input now here it is not unit step input it's other than unit step input so in case if you have anything other than unit step input what you have to do how do you calculate the percentage overshoot the percentage overshoot you know the formula right that is c of inf uh, c of tp okay the formula is c of tp minus c at infinity that is the steady state value divided by c at infinity into 100 this is the percentage overshoot this is how you have to calculate so what is c at tp c of tp peak at peak what is it 2.5 what what is the steady state value it is 2 so this you have to use and calculate the overshoot then we can apply the given formula so here percentage overshoot we get as 2.5 minus 2 divided by 2 into 100 so we get this as 25 percent okay so now this we can apply and find the zeta value so let us find zeta value for this so 25 is equal to e power minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square into 100 this is 0 0.25 equal to minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square so here we have ah uh, sorry so yes before this i yes i have write it is e power minus pi zeta by root of 1 minus zeta square in yes okay uh, then we have to take natural log on both sides. So we get it as minus 1.386 equal to minus pi zeta by root of 
1 minus zeta square. Square in both sides, you get as 1.922 into 1 minus zeta square equal to pi square zeta square, that is 9.869 zeta square. So further, what do we get? We get it as 11.792 zeta square equal to 1.922 zeta square is equal to 0 0.163 and zeta we get it as 0 0.404. This is zeta. Next, what do we require and what is given? Uh, Tp is given, right? How much is uh, Tp? Tp is equal to 2. So, Tp is equal to 2, right? What is the formula for Tp? Tp is equal to pi by omega d. So, what do we get? Omega d as omega d as pi by 2. So, this we will be getting it as 1.571 radians per second. So, from this what do we get? What is omega d? Omega d is omega n root of 1 minus zeta square. So, if I substitute for that, I get 1.571 is equal to omega n root of 1 minus 0.404 square and omega n is equal to 1.571 divided by root of 1 minus 0.404 square. Okay, so here omega n is equal to 1.717 radians per second. This is the answer for omega n. Now how to find the closed loop transfer function? We have to just substitute in the standard second order transfer function. What is the standard second order transfer function? Omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square. So let us substitute all the values over here. Omega n square is 1.717 square divided by s square plus 2 into 0.404 into 1.717 yes plus 1.717 square okay so what is the final answer c of s by r of s will be 2.95 divided by s square plus 1.387 yes plus 2.9 Right. This is the second order transfer, closed loop transfer function. Find k1 so that zeta equal to 0 0.35. Find the corresponding time domain specifications for the figure shown over here. So first thing, you know what you're supposed to do, right? We have to find the transfer function. So how do you find the transfer function? First, you have to solve the inner loop. So, if I solve the inner loop, say I'll write it as x. So, inner loop, if I solve, it will be 25 divided by s into s plus 3 whole divided by 1 plus 25 into s into s plus 3 into k1 s. So, we get this as x equal to 25 divided by s square plus 3s plus 25 k1 s. Then the outer loop if you solve c of s by r of s. It's a unity feedback, right? So 25, you solve it, okay? I will write the answer over here. We get it as s square plus s into 3 plus 25 k1 plus 25. This is what we get. Comparing with the standard second order transfer function, omega n square equal to 25. So, omega n is equal to 5 radians per second. And 2 zeta omega n is equal to 3 plus 25 k1. Here, what is given? Zeta is given, right? So, 2 into zeta is 0 0.35 into 5 is equal to 3 plus 25 k1. Simplify this, we get k1 is equal to 0 0.02. So, this is answer for 0 0.02. Now, we have to find the other time domain specifications. So, here let me find the peak time. Tp is equal to pi by omega d. 
this will be pi by omega n root of 1 minus zeta square. So get pi by omega n is 5 root of 1 minus 0.35 square. So tp we get it as 0.671 second. Next settling time. So it is 4 by zeta omega n. This is 4 divided by 0 0.35 into 5. This is 2.286 second. Next, I can find the rise time. Tr is equal to pi minus theta by omega d. So, what is theta? Theta is equal to tan inverse root of 1 minus zeta square by zeta. Remember, it is in radian. So, you need to keep a calculator in radian mode when you calculate theta. What do we get theta as? Theta is equal to root of 1 minus 0 0.35 square divided by 0 0.35. This is 1.213 radians. So TR is equal to pi minus 1.213 divided by omega d, right? So omega d is Omega n root of 1 minus zeta square 5 into 1 minus 0 0.35 square. We get this as 0 0.412 second. This is the answer. The last question is a unity feedback system has g of s equal to k by s into s plus 2 into s square plus 2s plus 5. For unit ramp input, it is desired the steady state error to be less than or equal to 0 0.2. Find k. So what is given here? It is mentioned that the steady state error for a ramp input. Okay. So for ramp input, what is a error coefficient? It is kv. It is limit s tends to 0, s into g of s into h of s. So this is limit s tends to 0, s into k divided by s into s plus 2 into s square plus 2s plus 5. So, you can cancel out s and s. So, when I apply limits, what do we get? k divided by 2 into 5. That is k divided by 10 we get. This is kv. Okay, then what is mentioned? ESS should be less than or equal to point to the mentioned. Okay. So now, what is ESS for a ramp input? It is given by 1 by, uh, it is uh, A by, right, K, V. But here, uh, they have mentioned the unit ramp input. Therefore, A is equal to 1. What should be the value? So 1 by K, V, they are saying it should be less than 0 0.2. What is K, V? K, V, we just calculated as K by 10. It should be less than or equal to 0 0.2. So here, get 10 by K is less than or equal to 0 0.2 or I can write it as 10 by 0 0.2 less than or equal to k or k should be greater than or equal to 50. This is the answer.